All right, let's get into them with a little mini lesson on oceans. Oceans 101, what do we need to know about our watery planet? So you might have heard that the majority of our planet is water, and that's not technically true because most of our planet is made of different rock types and, and minerals all underground. But if you look down at our planet from space, it is definitely true that the majority of the surface is covered in water. In fact, 71% of it is. And of that 71%, 97% is ocean, the other 3% being fresh water like lakes, rivers, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And more than that, a staggering 99% of all habitable space on our planet is actually in the oceans. It's just we can't live there because obviously we can't breathe water. Now, the Earth is pretty weird. We don't actually know of any other planet inside or outside our solar system that can actually hold water in its gas, liquid and solid forms all at the same time. I mean, we're pretty unique in that respect. The liquid form is arguably the most important of all of these for life, but I mean, they're all pretty important. We don't actually know the full details about how water became so abundant here on Earth. It's made of hydrogen and oxygen, as you may well know, and there would have been loads of that in our early solar system about 5 billion years ago. And as the Earth formed, it would have been way too hot to have had water on the surface. But as the Earth cooled and we developed an atmosphere, that would have allowed water to have pooled on the surface. And there's a few ideas of how water actually got here in the first place. Some theories are based around asteroids and comets hitting the Earth and leaving their water behind. In fact, new science from the Rosetta mission suggests that 10% of Earth's water could have actually come from comets and they left them here. A lot of the science now suggests that the water could have actually come from the same collision that gave us the moon. There was a big Mars-sized body in our solar system, hit Earth, kind of spun off the moon, and then left that water behind in the Earth. And over time, that could have come back out via volcanoes and active plate tectonics and the likes. So that's a really quick um, history of the Earth, 5 billion years, um, or history of the water. And it feels like there's a lot of it. But if you squeeze all the Earth's water down into a sphere, it'd only be around 1,300 kilometers across, so 860 miles. But that's all the water. The stuff that's useful to us, it would only actually be about 56 kilometers across, or 35 miles. That is all we've got to work with. That's all the fresh water on our planet. So our ocean is actually a massive body of um, salt water that runs right around the planet. We subdivided then into Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Arctic, and Southern Oceans. And it tastes salty because of the, the minerals collected by rainwater that runs into the oceans, and also then the minerals under the ocean, like at geothermal vents and the likes. And it harbors a lot of life. And um, because we've only explored a, a very tiny bit of the oceans, we aren't actually sure how much life it harbors, but it's anywhere between 50 and 80% of all life on Earth lives in the oceans. And the oceans are a great way uh, that the planet regulates itself. It's, um, it absorbs energy and moves it around the planet on big ocean currents. And one of the most well-known is actually the Gulf Stream, which runs from the Caribbean along the North American Atlantic coast, across the Atlantic, and it becomes the largest waterfall on Earth as it dives down to the bottom of the ocean off the coast of like the UK and Iceland. And it gives up that heat to Western Europe, making it a lot warmer than we would be without it. So... When we think about climate, oceans really should be where we start with the conversation. Ocean temperatures have increased by approximately about 0 0.13 degrees Celsius per decade over the last 100 years, and about 0 0.8 degrees since the Industrial Revolution. And the majority of the Earth's rising temperatures have been absorbed by the oceans. It's such a good conductor for heat that they just take on um, the, the, the heat trapped in the atmosphere due to global warming. And since the 1970s, 90% of the excess heat in the atmosphere has been absorbed by the oceans. So as worried as we rightfully should be about our atmosphere increasing in temperature, we should be a lot as, it, well, as worried, if not more worried, uh, about the, the oceans and the warming in the oceans. It's really finely calibrated to suit wildlife well, and we don't actually know what life can and can't exist in a warmer ocean. And it's also had some, some larger scale effects as well because a warming ocean means rising sea levels. Because a weird property of water is that when you freeze it, it expands. 
And then when you warm it, it contracts all the way to around four degrees Celsius. Then when you, when you went past four degrees, it starts to expand again all the way to boiling point. It expands by about 4% between four degrees Celsius and boiling point. And a large part of the eight inches of sea level rise over the, since about 1880 is due to the thermal expansion of water. The water getting warmer and starting to expand. Of course, melting ice will also play a part in sea level rise as well. The ice caps and glaciers that are currently on land are going to contribute. Strangely, the ice that's already in the oceans, like North Pole sea ice, like the Arctic Ocean, that's not going to contribute quite as much because it's already floating in the water. There's a great experiment you can do where you put ice into a glass, fill it with water all the way to the top, and as the ice melts, it doesn't actually change the, the level of the water uh, because it's already floated in it. So all of this is going to have an effect. It's going to change the salinity of the water, the warmth as well, as um, the, the ice starts to melt. It is very complicated, um, but there are scientists studying it. So as well as the, the heat in the oceans uh, and the heat that's been taken on by them, they've also been taken on CO2 as well. Um, as you know, if you've ever had a soda, when you mix carbon dioxide then or CO2 with water, you make it more acidic. And before the, the Industrial Revolution, the ocean used to actually be a small contributor to CO2. But since, we, since then, we've forced it to take on more and more CO2. Uh, and in a 27-year study, researchers actually found that uh, the oceans could have absorbed up to 67 billion tons of CO2 between 1992 and 2008, which is bad for a myriad of reasons. Uh, the main one, though, is ocean acidification, that um, change of the ocean's chemistry. And it's slowly becoming more and more acidic over time. And just a small change in acid acidity can actually decimate coral reefs and lots of other organi organisms that actually use calcium carbonate to build their shells. Because the, the more acidic oceans, it literally dissolves their homes quicker than they can start to build them. So a warming uh, climate caused by burning fossil fuels are changing the temperature, the salinity, and the chemistry of the water. But we also use 4% of the crude oil we collect every single year, and we make plastics from it. And unfortunately, around 8 million tons of plastics escape land and end up in the oceans every single year. So this is creating a crisis on top of the other crisis, which is climate change. Obviously, this has an effect by causing more trash in the environment, but many of the co consequences from this we just don't know about yet. We haven't been around uh, or studying it for long enough. And half of the plastic we've ever made has been made in the last 15 years alone. And manufacture is set to increase, set to double by uh, 2050. And what we're finding now is that uh, as the plastics break down, they find their way into every corner of the planet and to, into every organism on the planet as well, including you. According to, to research, we all eat around five grams of plastic every single week, around the same as a credit card. Depending on the type of plastic and the chemicals that leach out, um, and we're still not sure uh, what that's going to do to our bodies. There's still more research that needs to be done. But what is important is that we reduce the amount that we create, we reuse what we already have, and we recycle as much as we can. So this crisis that we've got in climate is just being exacerbated by the plastic crisis too. So lots to think about as we go forward with our oceans.